Right now, as we speak, the world is changing like we never imagined. That's not hyperbole. Something is happening right now, this very week, that promises to change everything. One of the key themes we've been tracking with over the last several months is how the Ukrainian conflict is indeed ushering in nothing less than a new political and economic world order, one that will decisively replace the old globalist economic order with a very different one, a much more multipolar and indeed, this is key, a much more multi-currency based economic order as well. And more and more economists and members of the financial class have been coming to that very same conclusion. For example, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink recently declared that the rise of the new Russia, one that's proven itself largely immune to Western sanctions, together with China and India representing nothing less than the end of liberal globalization as we've known it over the last several decades. So as you can see, more and more economists are coming to the very conclusion that we came to on this channel on the very first day when that war broke out, that a new political and economic order was indeed rising from the ashes of Ukraine. And there are several analysts who've been asking what this new economic world order means for the state of money. In other words, how will money change along with this changing world order? And lo and behold... Look at what's unfolding this week at what's called the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or the SCO's annual meeting in Uzbekistan. The SCO is fast becoming, if not already is, the largest economic organization in the world. It encompasses 40% of the world's population and 30% of the global GDP. It includes nations such as China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Tajikistan, India, Pakistan, Iran, and Uzbekistan, where international leaders are gathering this week. It's both a political and economic coalition that's just over 20 years old, and more and more nations around the world are beginning to acclimate themselves, recalibrate themselves around this rising economic titan. Now, obviously, all eyes right now are on Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. And one of the things that the Western media is inventing as far as this meeting is concerned is the notion that Putin is coming to China with his tail between his legs, looking for economic and military help in his doomed invasion of Ukraine. That's the kind of headlines you're going to be treated to by CNN. That's what you're going to get with Bloomberg and New York Times and the Washington Post and make absolutely no mistake that is absolute and total bs and nothing more while ukraine certainly won a couple of surprising battles of late for sure the kremlin has made it very clear that what they call the special military operation is going as planned with setbacks fully accounted for and that the final result in all this remains totally unthwarted as evidenced by Russia's increasing advance and inevitable takeover of the key strategic city of Bakhmut testifies, a victory that will in effect sever the Donbass region permanently from Ukraine. No, instead, I was actually taken back by Rupert Murdoch own Fox News, whose coverage of the Ukrainian conflict has generally been no different from MSNBC's. It's been horrible for the exception of Tucker's coverage, but I was pleasantly surprised by their latest headline on this meeting between Putin and Xi, China says it will work with Russia to create a new international order. And that's exactly what the SCO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, represents. And what we're seeing here is nowhere more explicitly, indeed more forcefully, we're seeing this in the emergence of a unique monetary system between SCO member nations that is in effect ditching the dollar as the global default currency. That's an absolutely astonishing development and something that was unthinkable just a few short years ago. One of the most significant financial developments that came out of the West's sanctions against Russia was Russia weaning itself or decoupling itself completely off what's known as the SWIFT global financial system. Up till now, a digital platform known as SWIFT has been the default international interbanking transaction platform. But SWIFT is basically owned almost entirely by banks in the United States and in the EU. And so after 30% of Russia's banks were expelled from SWIFT as part of the sanctions, Russia announced 
that instead they would be using China's alternative financial transaction platform called KIPS as a substitute, which in turn is already in the process of basically cutting off upwards of 25% of the world's population from SWIFT. Russia and China are now doing business in ruble and yuan exchanges, largely bypassing the dollar. And increasingly now, India is trading with Russia in rupees and rubles, again, bypassing the dollar. What's being proposed now is that the SCO as a whole begin the process of completely weaning its own intranational trade among its own member nations completely from the U.S. dollar. Look at what came out just today, September 14th, from the Global Times, which is the official CCP International News. Non-dollar settlement in energy trade will break U.S. hegemony. And the entire article focuses on the priority of non-Western nations, particularly China, Russia, India, to accelerate the decoupling of all energy trade, oil, gas, and the like, away from the U.S. dollar, the so-called petrodollar, and as such, in effect, crush U.S. dominance in the world's economy and politics. And the most fitting place for such a decoupling to be put into effect is, of course, among SEO member nations. And so what we're seeing here really is nothing less than a new global financial system comprised of a multi-currency exchange system, which has as its goal explicitly a global economic order centered on Moscow, Beijing, and Mumbai. And this new global economic order will in turn usher in a new world political order. And our feckless, leftist, woke, lamestream media is trying to convince you that Putin is traveling to see President Xi with his tail between his legs. It's so sad. And it's just a further testimony that a new world order really is rising up, and it's leaving the liberal woke order inexorably in the dust. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You'll definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on the FBI panicking over five bombshells from John Durham's latest filing. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure to click on that link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.